Leak code question 1971, find if path exists in graph. So there is a bidirectional graph with n vertices where each vertex is labeled from zero to n minus one inclusive. The edges in the graph are represented as a 2D integer array edges where each edge denotes a bidirectional edge between vertex ui and vertex vi. Every vertex pair is connected by at most one edge and no vertex has an edge to itself. You want to determine if there is a valid path that exists from vertex source to vertex destination. Given edges and the integers n, source and destination return true if there is a valid path from source to destination or false otherwise. Okay, so this is a good introductory question to graphs. So in example one, we have a bidirectional graph. There is no direction between the graphs. So these edges here, they are not directed. And this example is going to return true, right? Because we're going from the source, which is zero, to the destination which is two and there are two ways of getting this there's zero one two or just zero to two okay so let's work out how to solve this problem so here we have the graph zero one two we have the edges zero one one two two zero and we have the source which is equal to zero destination is equal to two so with this question we can utilize breadth first search or depth first search now it's a bit trickier than just normal depth first search because we don't have the right information in order to carry out the depth first search immediately. So we have to calculate that. And what we need to build is an adjacency list. And basically what an adjacency list is, is just defining the neighbors of zero, obviously being one and two, defining the neighbors of one and also defining the neighbors of two. And then we can DFS on that information. So the way we do that is we'd create a map data structure which would look something like this. So zero would be pointing to an array of one and two. One would be pointing to an array of zero and two. Two will be pointing to an array of zero and one. So we have this mapping, right? Now, if we started off here and we DFS, so we look to see whether we've reached this endpoint and move along in both directions, there's gonna come a point where we enter an infinite loop because we're just gonna keep searching. Now what we can use for that is a set, and this set will store every vertex that we visit. So initially when we carry out our DFS, our set will include zero, because we're gonna add that immediately to the set. Then we check the neighbors. So we look at one and two. So DFS has neighbors. We carry out DFS on one, so we can add that into the set. We check to see its neighbors, which is zero and two. If they're in the set, zero is in the set, so we don't go this way. We check two, two is not in the set, so we can DFS that as well. So we can add that into the set. We check its neighbors, so we check zero and one. Both of those are in the set, so we cancel off of that. And then we exit this DFS function. And finally, we can return true or false based on this set here. So if this set contains the value of the destination, which is two, then we can return true, else we're gonna be returning false. And that is the main logic of this problem. Now time complexity for this algorithm is going to be O V plus E, where V is equal to the vertices and E is equal to the edges because we're gonna to have to reverse through the entire graph. And space is also going to be O V plus E. So let's code this out. So graph is going to be a new map. And we're going to initialize our set as visited. Now we need to create the adjacency list. So we're going to loop through and extract out vertices and edges of edges. And we're going to check if our graph has V, then we can simply get V and push in E. Else we need to set the graph at that position. So graph.set v, and it's going to be an array because we're going to be containing the array to populate this map data structure. And then we also need to do the same for e. So if graph has e, And that's our adjacency list created now. So now we can create the DFS function. So we pass in vertex. 
and we're going to initially start at source because we want to check when we get from source to destination. And I need to change this to source and this to destination. So if in, the, in the example we said, firstly, we're going to set, we're going to add the vertex to visited. As soon as we hit that vertex, we're going to add it into our set. Then we need to get the neighbors of the vertex. So that's going to be equal to graph.get. I'm going to grab the vertex. Then we can do a simple check to see if neighbors are available and neighbors dot length is greater than zero. If it is, then we can loop through those neighbors. And we check if that neighbor is within visited. So is it in our set? Have we already visited it? If it isn't within the set, then we can recurse and we can carry out DFS on that neighbor. And then like we said, we need to return wherever visited has the destination. So this DFS recursive call is now going to populate the visited set that we have created. And if there is a path from source to destination, the visited set will contain the destination. So let's run that. Let's submit it. Okay, and there you have it.